Welcome to the Public Sector Marketing Show, a podcast for government and public sector marketing professionals who want to level up their digital marketing and social media knowledge, skills, and strategic thinking. And now, welcome your host, Joanne Sweeney. Hello and welcome to episode 42 of the Public Sector Marketing Show and it's time for our Christmas special. It's time to reflect on 2021 and some of our favourite projects that we have worked on in Public Sector Marketing Institute. It's also a great opportunity to share with you what I have learned from you. So I know you guys come to me and you want to learn from me, but the reality is that I learn so much from you and I take that learning into creating better content products, better episodes of Public Sector Marketing Show, and better strategies, and indeed, better books. So coming up in today's show, 2021 was a year of empowerment and evolution for public sector marketing. My colleague Jamila and I will take you through some of our highlights of the year and showcase some of our clients and our students. COVID-19 remained a big part of 2021, and we'll also think about how that framed comms this year. So set yourself up for some Christmas cheer, Christmas jingles, and a lot of ho, 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 as Jamelia and I take you back through 2021. You're all very welcome, and we have a special guest, as you can see, for the Christmas special of the Public Sector Marketing Show, and it is Santa Sophie, otherwise known as Sophie Sweeney, otherwise known as Sophie Junior and Joanne's daughter. Okay, Sophie Junior, Joanne Junior, <laughs> <laughs> or as a lot of people say, the brunette version of Joanne, or maybe a younger, more beautiful version of Joanne. Oh, whatever. How are you, Sophie? I'm good. Happy Christmas, Joanne. Merry Christmas. It's great to have you here. And I see that you dressed up for the occasion and you're going back to the 90s. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Best Christmas song out there. So listen, you're going to be the host. You get to ask the questions. I'm in the hot seat and I'm going to hand it over to you. Cool. So Joanne, at the beginning of this year, course the start of every year you have to set your goals you know there's no point just going through the motions so you're a goal getter you love a to-do list you love a plan and I'm going to make you accountable what did you achieve in 2021 that was on your goal list yes I do I love making plans I love setting targets so I guess a year ago I had a number of goals that I wanted to achieve First one is always I want to train more people because you know that my ultimate goal is to make an impact in the world of public sector marketing and train more professionals within that sector to be more astute and to be, to be more confident and confident online. And so we did increase our numbers and I was doing a tally before I came on and the final number of people trained by Public Sector Marketing Institute in 2021 is 1,100 and 53 so that's a remarkable number and actually COVID kind of helped us because everything is now online people are demanding training online and also it means that I don't have to physically travel so we're able to reach new markets we went into North America this year we also went into Asia and we had lots more people joining from Ireland the UK and broader Europe so that was goal number one train more people I also wanted to bring back the summit I cancelled it last year and I didn't want to cancel it again this year. So we brought it back and we went virtual. So that happened. And then thirdly, I felt that there was a couple of new products and knowledge products that we could add to our ecosystem. And we added two more and they are launching in 2022. So we have the done for you service, the social media done for you service, and we have the social media bootcamp. So three big goals, all achieved, and tick, tick, and tick. Well done, congratulations. Um, and you've done so much. So what was the biggest challenge? You know, how did you do it? Um, were there even challenges? Is it just like a duck, water off a duck's back? You know, you're queen of everything. Um, and how did you get overcome the challenge? And then what was your biggest learning as well? So I guess um, this year there was a lot happening for me personally in my life. 
and running a business and keeping the sunny or the festive side out is always a, a challenge. Um, but I kind of learned that your community within your business and especially in my community, they actually kind of come your your friends. They are a real support network. And what I learned this year that it's okay that if I have to postpone something or cancel something, that people aren't going to leave me or be really disappointed and that it's okay not to show up as your best self all the time because we're only human and people understand. So that was a, a great learning for me this year. But I also think more broadly, people have learned that during COVID because we've all struggled in, in some way during COVID and it's okay to say that you're struggling or that you know you need to park something. So that was a good learning for me this year. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of a negative, but it's even you turn negatives into positive, which is a testament to you. Um, but more positive, what do you think your highlight of 2021 was then? So I think both of the highlights have to be the summits. So first of all, it was our summit, the Public Sector Digital Marketing Summit. It was the third one and we converted it into a virtual event. And I was really nervous about doing that because, you know, do people want to come to a virtual summit for two full days? Will they really engage? Is it worth their while? So we used a platform called Whova and that proved to be one of the successes. Secondly, because it was virtual, I was able to reach out to more speakers across the globe who ordinarily I wouldn't be able to get to come to Dublin. And the speakers were off the charts this year. They were absolutely amazing. Uh, the, the attendees loved them. I was really impressed. You know, I sometimes I can be hard to impress. I was super impressed. And then the platform Hoover proved that people can definitely engage. And I had one attendee, I was only speaking to her in the last 24 hours and she said, she's an introvert. She doesn't like going to conferences on her own or in person. She wouldn't really be, you know, so inclined to be network and forthcoming. And actually she was one of our top engaging attendees. So the platform really suited her. So um, that was definitely one of the highlights. The summit proved to be uh, something that we could turn into a virtual event and people really enjoyed it and our engagement rates were off the charts. The second summit that I wanna mention is Facebook's first digital marketing summit for government, their transformation summit. And I was lucky enough to speak at their summit. So I was on a panel as a public sector marketing expert and one of the video clips got over 100,000 views. So thanks to Facebook for helping me go viral. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. I kind of think it's recognition over the last number of years that what we've been doing here has been picked up by some of the world's biggest brands. And previously I had um, given a guest lecture to Facebook staff on how they can maybe market to public sector and be more accessible to them. So yeah, both of the summits were my highlights this year. So you briefly touched on it there, your own personal summit for 2021, but do you have any plans to kind of switch it up in 2022? Obviously COVID is such a big question mark, so you can't promise anything, but can you give us any little exclusive as to what your plans are? Well, yes, uh, the listeners to this podcast and the viewers to the show know that I love giving them some exclusive insights. So I am committing right now to bringing the summit back in 2022 and it is going to be a hybrid event so it's going to be in person we will have in-person tickets to sale for sale obviously subject to covid and we're also going to still offer it virtually to anybody who doesn't want to attend so i think i'll have a limited capacity on in-person tickets uh but i'll also do it virtually and we will still use hoover as the platform and we will have a venue I'm thinking that it's probably going to be double the work. But anyway, I'm up for a challenge. And also, I listened to the feedback. So we always ask our attendees for feedback and their preferences. And the results showed that 50% wanted in person, 50% wanted online. And so my solution is to go hybrid and offer both. Amazing. Yeah, giving the people what they want. So you're for a very small town Donegal woman, you're amazing at like spreading yourself across the world. So you did collaborate um, across the pond over in the USA. Tell us a little bit more about that. So yeah, obviously I wanna 
you know, impact as many countries as possible across the world. That's the plan. And one of the, the best ways I think to do that is to collaborate. Um, I mean, artists have been collaborating for, for decades. So why can't business people collaborate? So I uh, collaborated with Rojas Communications in California and with Jaime and his team over there. And for the past three years, I've been writing and publishing the State of Social Media Report. So I've done it for Ireland twice. I've done it for uh, Australia. And this year I decided to do it for the United States. And so we actually did a federal government and we also did local government in 17 states. Uh, so that was a massive piece of work. And that report, the State of Social Media for the USA is available for free on our website if you're so interested and I see people downloading it every week. So people are still engaging with the report and then it results in people reaching out to me and actually I want to welcome Brooke if you're listening and Brooke is from the city of Pierre in South Dakota and she came across me and the report and has recently joined a professional diploma in social media so there you go the world becomes a very small place absolutely yeah so a lot of people and you know your listeners will know you as a trainer you know you're you're teaching you're passing on the knowledge you're helping people but you're also a bit of a practitioner you know you haven't hung up the boots completely you still do get involved and get your hands dirty so tell us about some of the projects that you got involved with your clients during 2021 yeah so behind all the training and the social media and the podcasting and the live streams I'm really kind of, as you say, down and dirty in the work on the front line. And that's something I realized that I still wanted to do because in you know previous years, I would have had like a marketing agency and loads of staff and I was becoming a manager and not really you know, doing the work. And I actually love the work. I love doing up the work, writing the strategy, becoming an extension of marketing teams within government and public sector to help them on specific projects. So very often I would write the process, come up with a plan for a project and then implement side by side with the staff. So that means that they learn by doing and they learn by me by being by their side and our team. And I just feel from a value for money point of view, from a government spend, public sector spend of the public purse, that when I train or when I consult, there has to be legacy impact, that their teams have to be able to do it when I leave. So my approach is never go in as a consultant, do what they need to do and then leave and take the knowledge. I just don't think that that is a uh, fair. I don't think from an ethical point of view that that's how my approach should be. And you know, the, the mission of this company is to, is to impact public sector pros so that they can be better communicators in a digital world, in a world where you know misinformation is, is spreading at a lightning speed. So some of the projects that we worked on this year that were really exciting, and I did a, like an epic live tweeting of the two-day uh, conference, All Atlantic 2021, and that was a hybrid event hosted in the Azores, uh, an island of, Port of Portugal. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it to the Azores because COVID was rampant at that stage, but I did it from my office, and it was amazing to be live tweeting uh, government ministers from Portuguese, EU commissioners, and international speakers. So uh, 1,200 people came to that event. They had zero when we started. Uh, we did all the marketing and we helped with the live streaming and the communications and the PR, and that was very exciting. So that was one project that we worked on. Um, another project is our work with the Association of Garda Sergeants and Inspectors. We've been doing that for about eight years right now. And their conference came back this year, so that was brilliant to see. Um, and as we know, Gardaí and policing have been doing great work through the pandemic. So I'm always very proud to work with them. Um, we also did some work with the EPP group in the European Parliament. Again, great to work with uh, members of the European Parliament. Uh, Maria Walsh is one I want to call out. Um, Maria is brilliant on Instagram. She's got her own podcast as well. And we enjoyed working with her and her team. Um, we also did the Column Kill 1500 event that was to celebrate the 1500th birthday of Ireland's third patron saint, St. Columba, who actually was born in Garton, Sophie, where a parish where we used to live. And um, we know the old, the old curse that we think St. Columba left, right? We tell that story. So apparently 
Columkill on his travels 1500 years ago um, actually came to a door apparently in Downings where we're from and it was the door of a Sweeney family and he asked for bread and water and apparently got refused. So they said that the Sweeney's would never do in Downings. Now we know our, you know, my mother and your lovely grandmother are still there and my sister Kira and, you know, but you never know. What I did learn at that Column Kill 1500 event is that there are many myths and legends around St. Columba. So it's not necessarily true. However, I did think when I was driving to that event in Donegal, I got married in the church in Garton where Column Kill <laughs> was born and that didn't work out so i don't know maybe there's, some truth. maybe there's some truth in the curse so anyway um sorry i digress there but that was a wonderful event and you can see that events are coming back they're hybrid they're virtual they're a little bit in person and so we were using our experience of hosting events and bringing it to our clients and then we got a chance to work with a load of local authorities a Sligo County Council, the library section, Dublin City Council, their library section, Meath County Council, Donegal County Council, and um, also with Higher Education, the Irish Universities Association, Trinity College Dublin, Galway Mayo Institute of Technology. So we're always behind the scenes putting into practice what we teach. So yes, we are practitioners and not just trainers. Amazing. So your business, I always say, is your third child and it's probably your favorite child, um, per me and Bobby. But anyway, that's not a discussion for now. Um, you love your podcast. You love, you know, doing what you do. Did you have a favorite episode this year? I thought you were going to ask me if I had a favorite child. <laughs> no, it's me, obviously. Thank my, my goodness. <laughs> Favorite, a favorite episode. Okay, so this is really tricky, but I'm going to go in for episode three or four. I don't know the exact numbers, but it was on how to manage negativity online with Tony Reno. This is an episode that everybody needs to listen to. And Tony is a communication specialist from Canada, and he was published last year in the McMaster's Journal of Communication on his work on how to deal with negativity online. And he actually quoted some of my own work in his academic work, which is brilliant, and that's how he found me. And so when we got a chat and I read his research, I said, you've got to come on the show. And it was absolutely amazing. He talks about the 1%. And he says the 1% of the trolling and the negativity are often the loudest people online. But why do we retract from our online work, our message, and why do we let the 1% take us down when there's 99% of an audience willing us on and wanting to hear what he said. And he also said, and from a public sector point of view, I thought it was really important, it's quite dangerous that perhaps governments, politicians, public policymakers, public figures, and you can apply this to all sectors, would actually do a U-turn or change a policy decision or legislation based on the 1%. It's a very dangerous strategy. And I know from my experience, you know, negativity online is something that is a hurdle for public sector. But if you're willing to embrace the negativity and understand the source, and that's what Tony spoke about. If somebody is negative online, what is the source of their negativity? Is it an unhappy citizen who cannot access a service because it's just not available? Is it somebody who's not getting good customer service because you're not listening? Is it somebody who, who has a different opinion to you? And that's absolutely fine. Or is it just a troll? And is it somebody who's trying to disrupt democracies, take down governments, or who have um, malicious intent? And if you listen to the 1%, but then understand of which 1%, what their true problem is, maybe you can resolve it. And then if you've got trolls or people with malicious intent, then you just block and mute. So Tony Reno, it's the episode of how, how to handle negativity online. You got to listen to it. It's my favorite. Amazing. And you always have great guests in your podcast and everything you do. You have the best of the best because you are the best of the best. So who would be your dream podcast um, guest? Apart from me, obviously. But, you know, who would be your dream guest? Oh my goodness, um, that is a brilliant question. And now that I'm going to answer it, I'm going to have to chase them down. 
So I would really love to get Jacinda Ardern on my podcast. I think she is a shining light when it comes to political leadership. She's the Prime Minister of New Zealand. She uses social media so well. The last Facebook Live that I watched, she was sitting in her bed and it was the evening time and her, her child came in. I think it's a daughter that she has. And she just continued on and she was like, yes, love, I'll be in in a minute. And it was just so human. And oftentimes we see our public figures try not to be human and, you know, you know, wearing their suit or hiding behind their suit, whether it's a woman or a man or whatever. And I just think that she's a great example of how social media can be and should be used for good and how you can be yourself and you can have more impact. And so Jacinda Ardern, if you're watching or if somebody is listening or watching that has a line directly into her, you're more than welcome to come on the podcast in 2022. Yeah, we need to make that happen. Um, so you talked about your favorite episode. My favorite episode is when you put in all your bloopers. I thought that was brilliant because people think you're, you always say I'm one take wonder. That's not always true. Um, what's your favorite blooper? What do you think was the funniest moment in like doing all this? You put so much work into it. And of course you have to take, you know, the light. You talk about serious things, but you have fun doing it. What has been your favorite blooper? So I think my favorite blooper, and we'll go, we'll go to play it after uh, I call it out, okay? So Niall will we'll put it into the edit. Um, probably when I was um, trying to remember a list of about seven things, seven tips that I wanted to give to my listeners and my viewers. And I was like, oh, Niall, I, 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 I need to look around. Sorry, let me look around uh, to see it. And he was like, or I was like, I was trying to remember. And he said, Joanne, look around the right behind you and it was just like it's just kind of like a joanne blonde moment and yeah. uh, and then then trying to get it first time where i say okay let's just do this once because uh, i like to be efficient and um at the beginning i was really rough around the edges and i had to keep going keep going and then there was unfortunately a few expletives but they never make the cut so yeah the bloopers was fun <laughs> sorry you know what i'm doing here i'm trying to see my next point Jesus Christ. And now moving into 2022, so we've ended this year, you know, it's been a great year. What are your New Year's resolutions for 2022? Do you have any? Do you believe in them? And yeah, let's do business and personal as well, if you want to share. Well, I, I know the business ones, right? I'm useless at the personal ones, but let's start with business. Okay, so 2022 is going to be all about the book. So Public Sector Marketing Pro that was published in 2019 is getting a facelift because so much has happened in public sector comms and we have the lessons from COVID-19. And so I am writing, currently writing the second edition that will be launched in the third quarter of 2022. I'm really excited about that. So it won't be a completely rewrite. I'd say it'll be about a 30 30% rewrite and definitely updated. So you can look forward to that. We're also hiring at Public Sector Marketing Institute and I'm very excited about that. So we're gonna get a new team member joining us and they will be responsible for growing and expansion. So that's really good. And I wanna get into new markets. I wanna really deepen the footprint, Ireland and the UK, mainland Europe, but I think we've, we've got more work to do in terms of the US. Australia and Asia and so that's definitely what I want to do and um, and then I just want to actually there's another thing and I'm going to say it I've really got to master and get, build a profile on TikTok and um, Bobby won't be too happy about it but it was an intention maybe in 2022 but now it's a goal uh, 2021 but now it's a goal in 2022 so there you go okay. and personal, personal yeah Right. Okay. You know I need an answer for you. <laughs> no, I do not. You want to go back traveling. You yes, love okay. traveling. Yeah, you want to see new things. That's yeah. how you relax. Yeah. So definitely want to get back traveling. I'd love to go back to Australia, and I'd love to see Singapore for the first time. I also want to bring Bobby to Disney World because you've been. Oh, well, okay. yeah, you get to come oh, too. <laughs> You're part of the package. Okay. So yeah, um, I'd love to bring Bobby to Disney World. Um, he's never been, you've been, 
and yeah just making memories that sounds so cheesy but you know it's hanging out with with you guys a lot more and yeah maybe getting some new hobbies i say this every year don't i yeah every year i am your hobby <laughs> yeah you are my hobby absolutely um and maybe having more days off that would be good yeah four day working week here you come i have a huge proponent and jamelia jamelia has it she's got that sorted um she's got the four day working week and so she's setting the example for the rest of the team in this business is that okay did i answer that question okay i hate that question yeah yeah brilliant i'll hold you accountable this time next year thanks <laughs> Um, so for our audience, did you know that you can work with Joanne in 2022 and level up your digital skills? So Joanne, what are the options to work with you next year? So we have been working on refining our kind of knowledge product ecosystem and making sure that people can work with us at any level. So even if you just want to learn, um, there's free content. So we have the Tuesday e that goes out. We have this podcast and the weekly show. We also have our blogs. We also have free webinars that we do every one or two months. And we also have free workshops and free downloads. So just go ahead and pick from those. Then we kind of step up the, the kind of engagement with us and the team. And we have the done for you, social media done for you product that is launching in early 2022. And if you need a template social media strategy, template policies, if you want a 365 day calendar of ideas, if you want social media graphic templates and Canva that you just need to change the fonts and the colors to your own brand, we've got those. And we've got other checklists like live video checklist, hashtag checklist, a social media audit guide, performance tracker in an Excel sheet. Sophie, you'll be very proud of me. It's wow. an Excel sheet. And that is coming, and that's thinking going to go to market at about 300 euro. So you can go and take that. It's in our membership, and you can go and take that, and that will sort you out social media-wise. Then we have our social media boot camp. It's five live classes covering each of the core social networks. You get a strategy for each of the so core social networks and also the tactics on what's working. And that are, is three hours each workshop, five consecutive weeks. And that's coming in at 600 euro. If you buy them all together, if you buy them individually, it's 150 euro, so you can pick and choose. Then we have our uh, certificate in digital prices comms. That's 750 euro. I don't know why I'm telling you the prices. They're on the website. But it's just to show you that it goes up in kind of tiers. And then we have our membership. So you get to become a member of the Institute for a full year. You get three hours of live coaching every month and you also get access to our library of resources and you get to network with other public sector pros from across the world and then we have our signature courses the most popular one is the professional diploma in social media for government and public sector everybody loves that course i love it too and it'll be getting a, a facelift in the new year that's 1500 euro and also when you buy one of the signature courses the diploma in social media or the professional diploma in digital marketing you automatically get that membership so you automatically get in to three live sessions a month and our library of resources and then the the highest tiered one in terms of the knowledge products is the professional diploma in digital marketing for government and public sector and that's two and a half thousand euro and that's all about developing your critical thinking being able to lead a team on digital strategy um, and then you've got a team actually implementing. And then after that, you get to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. If you don't want to take any of those courses or programs, you can then hire me and my team to work one-on-one. -on -one. That's designing and delivering bespoke training or then any digital transformation project or any event that you have, and we can become a temporary member of your team. So there you go. Loads of options from free to uh, working with us one-on-one. -on -one amazing yeah you cover all bases no one has any excuse now you know if they need to get out there get working with you um uh, that's all the questions i have for you um but let's close on a positive note going into the new year um for all our public sector colleagues out there what piece of advice do you think that they should have on their goals now going into the new year what a great question sophie so what I would say to you is, first of all, you have to acknowledge all the skills and the experience 
and that public sector intuitiveness that you have, that is still relevant. I think that oftentimes they, you guys put yourselves under pressure. You think that you know, you've been working in maybe an organization for 10, 15 years and you think that maybe your skills are obsolete. Absolutely not. All you need is that 10%, which are the digital skills that give you that extra edge. And also, I can tell you that the people that have come through our programs, and this is not a, a cheap plug, but I've seen how they've been able to advance their career, advance their teams, be the digital champion within their organization, get up the career ladder, get a promotion, maybe move to a new organization and influence and have the head of the organization or the head of the department actually listening to you and coming to you for advice. All of that is possible if you just make the commitment to move the dial on your digital skills in any small way possible. And I try and take the fear out of it. And I also try and make it fun. So yeah, just make the commitment. And when you make a commitment to yourself, you know, it will pay off. And I can guide you on what that, you know, training or mentoring should look like. And I always have my calendar open. It's a new thing that I did this year. I leave slots uh, Monday to Friday, late in the afternoon. If you want to jump on for a career guidance call, I'm more than happy to direct you. And Sophie will know it's never an aggressive sale. She'd probably like me to be more aggressive in my sales tactics, but I'm not because I, I really want the working relationship to be authentic and people to feel comfortable. Um, and I, I think that happens organically. Absolutely. I concur. And I can vouch for you that you're definitely work working with worth working with. <laughs> That's everything, Joanne. It's been so lovely talking to you. You're a great guest. <laughs> well, thank you, Sophie. And I, I want to say thank you for you to jumping into the hot seat. We did intend to have Jamelia here, let's just say that, but she's out on sick leave at the moment and we miss her. And we just want to wish her um, a wonderful Christmas and to Adrian also. Um, but you were you were a great stand in Santa Sophie. Love the name. <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. And I guess before I go, I think it's really important that we call out our team um, yeah. and the team that work with me and alongside me, they are absolutely brilliant. They are one in a million. We'll start with Jamelia. A lot of you met her at the summit. Um, she was just guiding that and she was managing the some of the sessions on day two. And you know by now that she is based in Cape Town in South Africa. And she's been working with me for well, almost 11 years now. So we're we're just like, one person essentially um, and we also have angela who joined our team this year and she is our social media executive and i want to shout out to niall and the team in sound to light and finbar as well because they produced this wonderful show and they also helped produce the public sector digital marketing summit so those guys do a wonderful job and we are upping our production levels in 2022 so watch this space for what comes in the new year um, I've also had other team members that worked with me throughout the year. Alan was doing some copywriting. We had Melanie and um, also Julia was working with us. So um, yeah, so I want to thank everybody who has um, had an input into the business this year and into our work. I really appreciate it and all the suppliers that we work with. Ah, But of course, I want to thank our customers and our students and our partners and our collaborators uh, without your trust in us and your investment in us, we wouldn't be here. And I want to uh, want to say a big thank you. And as a thank you from me to all of you, we've made donations this year to two very worthy Irish charities. Um, and I'll write the why behind that in my email. So if you're on my list and you're listening to this on the day of publication, you will see the why behind those two charities. Um, but those two charities are Women's Aid, in Ireland that uh, support women who are victims of domestic violence and also Hilltop Sanctuary who uh, are a rescue sanctuary with now 97 animals and um, Sophie I believe that we have twins that have come from Hilltop Sanctuary do they want to make an appearance or if they disappeared? They <laughs> they've disappeared you keep talking I'll try and find one <laughs> okay, so yes, so Daisy and Leo are rescues from Hilltop Sanctuary and Hilltop Sanctuary is based in County Clare in the west of Ireland and Katrina Lowry does amazing work. Honest to goodness, if you're not following her on Twitter, go and search for Katrina Lowry and um, 
she basically has set up a sanctuary and she is giving a second chance to rescues. So, oh, I'm gonna cry now. This is Leo. Hi, Leo. Hi. Hi, Leo. <laughs> my favorite cat. I don't mind oh, saying that. It is my favorite Stay with me. So this is Leo. And Leo has come from Hilltop Sanctuary. And so we've made a donation to Hilltop, Hilltop Sanctuary in order to get them through the winter and so that they have cat food and a litter and that they have horses too and they get hay. Um, and so it's a really important charity. And Katrina does amazing work. She actually is an angel to those animals. And we love second chances. We love the underdog. And we love when people believe in other people and I believe in the rescues. I, I believe in women who are victims of domestic violence and I believe in my clients and I believe in, um, yeah, in social media for good. So Leo, this is your debut on the public sector marketing show. You could get Twitter or Instagram famous on the back of this. So if you're listening to the podcast, you need to jump to the YouTube channel to see Leo. He's gorgeous. And he's slow blinking at me now because he recognizes my voice. He does. He loves his cat, Nan. He loves his cat, Nan. Sophie, we're going to have our Christmas party later. So for for now, thank you so much for no, our uh, the Public Sector Marketing Show, the Christmas special. And Sophie is my biggest supporter. And behind everything is little Sophie keeping her out. So Sophie, thank you so much for everything no. you do for me. I really appreciate it. No worries. You're the best too. Merry Christmas. And we're going to go out with our favorite Christmas song that Niall is going to play. So what is your favorite Christmas song? Will we will we play some Wham? It's Last Christmas. Has to be. Has okay. To be. That's Christmas. it. We're going to close with Last Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Bye. Last Christmas. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed our Christmas special. We thoroughly enjoyed putting it together. We've had lots of fun over the past year and I've really loved building up the audience for the Public Sector Marketing Show. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Maybe you can catch up over the Christmas and New Year with other episodes that you didn't get around to listening. And also don't forget that we always stream every week on YouTube and on Facebook. But for me, for now, wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. And there is one last show left next week in 2021. So I'll be back to you with that. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Public Sector Marketing Show. This episode has ended, but your digital journey can continue. Head over to publicsectormarketingpros.com to access resources and links mentioned in today's show and to connect with Joanne and her team. Until the next time, be sure to subscribe, rate and review on your favorite podcast platform.